Watch this. Oh, see how you can't see how you can't see me. New camera, bitch. Let's get to know each other, huh? Huh? New camera, new me. <sighs> Same you. And that's why you're watching this, because I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a better you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining. I have been talking for a while now about microneedling my skin at home. And I've gotten a lot of questions about how does it work? How do I use it? So I wanted to do this video to do kind of like a tutorial for you. I'm gonna show you the device I'm using. I'm gonna show you how I use it. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the different benefits of a microneedle roller. Right now, oh my God, before you do anything, please, please, please stop what you're doing, stop what you're doing. <laughs> please, for the love of God, like the video, subscribe to the channel, or certainly, imminent death is less imminent and more immediate. Please, please, please. Anyway, I already look like an after, but that's because I take such good care of my skin every fucking day. Every day that I wake up is a new day to remind myself how imminent death is. And with death comes aging, wrinkles, societal rejection, and thus every day do things to my skin in order to maintain the fountain of youth. You know, the Amazon Prime Day sale is going on right now, and I considered uh, buying a nugget ice maker. There's um. There's two things that stop me though. First of all, the fact that it sits on the counter and I just, I fucking hate shit being out. If I'm gonna get a nugget kind of ice maker, I'm gonna get one that goes like under my counters. But the other reason is because I don't wanna spend $500 on something like that. You know, not right now. I'm spending all of my money uh, looking for the fountain of youth, not fountain sodas. If you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, well, I guess, I guess your priorities are different than mine. A micro needle roller is, can I say it's what it sounds like? Like, I don't know what it sounds like because it might sound like jibber jabber to someone who doesn't know. Here is an example of a micro needle roller. So this is, <laughs> I'm just, I'm the clumped. I'm emotional to have a camera that can actually focus on the thing I wanted to focus on. I've never had that. <sighs> Big deal, you guys. Big deal. This is the micro needle roller I'm gonna talk to you about today. It's a handheld device that comes on this like kind of spinny wheel thing and it's covered in tiny, tiny little sharp needles. They're not like blood drawn needles. It's not like you're gonna shove something in your face. They're really, really thin, finely tipped, tiny little just sharp things basically. There's actually a few different benefits to micro needling. Um, Think of it as a good kind of catch-all for anyone who has any issue with their skin whatsoever. The idea behind microneedling is that you're gonna create like small little abrasions, tiny bits of damage that will then help your skin kind of pump out all these good things that it generally creates naturally, but that start to diminish as we age. Specifically, things like collagen or elastin in your skin. Your collagen reserves really start to deplete as you get older. And that's when you start to notice things like wrinkles, uh, some sagginess, maybe you're having like, I feel like I've started noticing right here on the jawline, we call those jowls because women can't age at all without some offensive term being applied to what's happening to them. It will help create the different reactions within your skin and your epidermis that will actually start to either reverse or better manage some of those things happening. In addition to helping with like wrinkles and firmness, I'm really focused right now on targeting some dark spots on my face. My dark spots are coming from, let me see if I can close, do a close up. Oh my God, it's offensive. It's gorgeous and it's disgustingness. It's just so clear and it's just, ah. So what you'll notice are these, these red spots. I'm very fair, I talk about this all the time, but the paler you are, the more any discoloration on your face is likely uh, to appear maybe worse than it is. So these are actually from breakouts that I had in some cases a month ago. Uh, this one was from a month ago. This one has just decided to pop up. I'm in the process of treating her. Uh, this one's a few weeks old. I'm actually not, I don't even remember this one. So anyway, these are all just from 
breakouts that I had. And they are completely flat, they're completely cleared and gone, but I've been left with these red spots. I have the same thing on this side. This one was so, so fucking bad, it was so painful. This one came out seeking revenge because it was rude and painful. I'm trying to treat these dark spots in particular and that's where I've been really focusing my microneedling efforts as of late um, and it will also help you with getting those to fade and kind of reducing some of that hyperpigmentation. So if you have more, my spots are more red, if you have more like brown spots which is really really common on most people, I think just the fact that I am so fair mine seem a little more red, a little more purple, or maybe you're dealing with like malaria Asthma. A lot of women experience melasma when they get pregnant. That's very common. So microneedling is designed to help with all these different aspects of your skin. On top of like trying to fix old problems, one of the other things you can do is more preventative with microneedling. It's obviously helpful to create collagen production within your skin before you really lose it. But also the microneedling can help prep your skin to better absorb the products that you're putting on them. <laughs> I don't know about you. But I spend thousands upon thousands of dollars on skincare annually, uh, and I want that shit to work. So in order to make sure I get the biggest bang for my buck, I will microneedle before I apply my products and to help that, to help my skin just like suck it up. You know, Daniel Day-Lewis, I drink a milkshake style, suck it up. Um, or like just being a woman in America and we just have to suck it all up, whatever the fuck is happening to us. I can't. Ugh. At home microneedling is not the only type of microneedling. And truth be told, it's not necessarily the most potent form, but it all kind of depends on what your goal is. You can actually get professional microneedling done through a dermatologist's office, a plastic surgeon, Medispa. The in-office treatments for microneedling are super, super effective at all the things that I've already mentioned. Now, when we think about the types of microneedling available, at-home microneedling is probably pretty like low on the potency scale, particularly if you're not doing it often. This is not to say that you shouldn't do it. I will come back to this. What I do mean to say is there are professional microneedling services that are going to do a fuck ton more than what you can do at home. So it's really just a matter of knowing about your goals. But I've had microneedling done in office. Specifically, I've had the PRP uh, facial, which is plasma, plasma rich, platelet rich plasma. You thought I didn't have it, did you? For just like a second. Me too. Platelet rich plasma microneedling is where they first draw your blood and they do it like in your arm and then they spin it and then your blood separates into like the red blood cells and then like the platelets or something and then they use that when they're microneedling so that as they're creating these tiny little puncture punctures is like not the right way to say it but hmm hmm how else could I say it mmm mmm puppies you know how you get like a puppy and they kind of they kind of like net and like do that thing where they, ah, they like gnaw on you and, and it hurts a little bit but it's not like oh my god excruciating pain it's sort of like that it's like that all over your face it's creating all these tiny little abrasions all over your face think of it like little jackhammering if you will why am I so bad think of it like sandpaper it's sort of just like kind of getting through to penetrate deeper into the layers of your skin and then it in, it kind of follows up with the application of all those platelets from your blood it's like a one-two punch you know where you get the impact from the microneedling you get the extra impact from all the platelets in your blood that are going to help stimulate the good shit in your face that does all the good nice things to it. That's the service that I've had professionally. It is going to come with a heftier price tag. You can get a service like that and look yourself within a couple of days, at least in my experience. If your face is fucked and you like bought a ice nugget ice maker instead of hundreds of dollars of skincare, then like maybe you want to start there. For the rest of us, if you've kind of done that before or you're just looking to dip your toe in and see what you can get from your own at home benefits, then you can start here. The at home microneedling devices are wide ranging. Like you can buy them as cheap as $8 all the way up to $300, maybe even more depending on the brand. I have a relatively inexpensive one and I've actually had quite a lot of success using it. Um, but I will add, I use it regularly. Nothing works 
that you don't use. So you can't use it one or even two times and expect to see much happen. The best way to get the results out of this shit is to do it two to three times a week, depending on your goals. Fewer than that and it may not happen or maybe it'll just take a lot longer. I've really started to see results by about three weeks in by using it two to three times a week. You do want to be cautious about how often you use stuff that's like kind of harsh for your skin because if you overdo it, whether it's could be microneedling, but things like retinol or vitamin C, um, anything that's meant to kind of create cell turnover, that shit is potentially very drying. And so if you either go in too quick or you use it too often, you can fuck up your skin barrier big time. And then you have to spend a lot of time repairing that. And it's like, so just be mindful of that. Okay, so here's the set that I have. It is not organized at all. So you see how it has a tip. Yep. I'm a professional. This has different attachments. The fit, so it comes with your like basic handle, right? And so you could, this is the basic handle and then it has all these different attachments. I use this large one a lot just because it covers like a lot more surface area than some of the other attachments. I will use this all around the big sections of my face. So my jawline, my cheeks, I'll use it in my forehead. I'll even do my eyebrows with it because you can actually stimulate hair growth with a microneedler. So whether you're dealing with like maybe postpartum hair loss or you're just trying to grow your hair out, um, this can actually help. You can take this into your scalp too. And I do it on my lips. I use this big attachment for my neck. So this is probably the most utilized attachment in my lineup. Then you have this slightly smaller one. So really easy to change them in and out. This one, they actually say this one is for your face. They say the other one is for your body. And yes, you can use this anywhere on your body that you're having issues. If I had more time, uh, like if I didn't have a child, I'd use the big attachment. I would use this attachment all over my arms and my shoulders because that's the one of the, oh, that's like the only place in my body that I have freckles and I fucking hate them. And I plan on fully getting them lasered off at some point. But until then... This is what I'm trying to do. But anyway, so you can use that one on your body. This is the one I use on my face for some of the more like small spaces. So like I use this above my lip to get into some of those like lipstick lines or in the nasolabial folds right here. There's this very small narrow one. And this is the one I use like under my eyes. So I'll go in here right under uh, between my nose and my eye and then I do it in the under eye area you again could do this one right here on your eyebrow you could do this again even on your lips I mean anywhere that's a little bit harder to reach with the big one this is a really great little attachment and then there's this attachment which I am the most scared of <laughs> it's uh got a cap on it because it has a bunch of needles on it as you can see this is probably the most like similar to the stuff you'll find in an office but this is very much for like a targeted spot so that's what I end up using on the spots on my face after I've done the other attachments I go in and I just sort of dot 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 a few times it's absolutely the most painful of all of them but even still like I can I can bear it it also comes with this. I have never, admittedly, never used this attachment. I believe this is for like cleaning your face. I'm sure, maybe it's good. Maybe I should actually start using it. I don't know. And then the last but not least is this little pe This little guy comes with it. And I'm not really sure what it's for. I mean, it's about the same size as this more narrow attachment. So it's like in between the narrow attachment and the narrowest attachment. Uh, and it does not have, it's not a detachable. This is all one piece. So it might just be a matter of... Maybe it's for travel. I don't know. In order to start it, to start getting, in order to start getting started with it, <laughs> you'll want to make sure your face is completely clean and doesn't have any products on it, like no toner on it, nothing that's not just your bare face. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. One, you want to make sure your device is hygienic. You are literally poking tiny little needles into your face. You don't want to put any product in there that's not meant for that purpose. Um, that's the first reason. And oh God, fuck. Okay. The other reason is, of course, for hygiene. Um, when you're putting shit on your face and you're using a device or a brush or a tool of some kind to put it on there, you do want to be mindful about bacteria because you can spread bacteria around over and over again, creating more issues for your skin that you're actually trying to solve for and all you're doing is making them worse. First rule is your skin needs to be completely clean. 
The second is you want your devices to be clean too. So I'm not really sure if this is how they designed it, but like, so it comes in this tray. Comes with this tray, okay? And then this is where one of the big attachments goes. So the way you clean it is just with alcohol. And I, not like tequila, but like, you know, sterilized alcohol or whatever it's called. Um, I use the big con uh, compartment for a little bit of alcohol. And then I just will like submerge the head of the tool into the, con the compartment. And then I'll like roll it around a couple times to make sure all sides of it get cleaned. And I just do that for like, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. I rinse it off in warm water and then I let it dry. And that's it. And I would do that. I probably should be doing that every time I use it. Full disclosure, I don't. I probably do it a few times every few times I use it. Um, and that's on being real. Okay, let me show you how I use it. Let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the big attachment as I explained. And I sort of work from like my chin up to my face and then I go in the center last. I don't think it, it does not matter. What matters is that you do enough passes. So I sort of start right here on my chin and I do it in four directions. So about four to five times, sometimes I do more just because I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and count, but I go back and forth in one direction, kind of like one part of an X. So I will do that all over my face and I don't and then now I'm moving up a layer I don't have to press very hard you'll kind of get the feel of what the right pressure is it might feel more intense when you first start than it does as you go on but you want there to be enough pressure that it's you feel that, that there's something happening if you're not pressing hard enough if you don't feel anything then you're not pressing hard enough but you also want to be mindful you're not trying to make yourself bleed because that's not that should not happen your skin will probably get pink maybe not on this first go through but um mine usually does you can even start to see it's getting a little pink there okay so i start on that side and i do this so i kind of do like three strips along my face along my cheeks and uh jawline now I'm moving up one more time. So it's again, it's a few passes back and forth. Move up again that last time. So now I've done my first pass. Now I'll go and I'll do like my chin. I get most of my breakouts around my chin as you can see. And so I'm always really focused on this area of my face. This is also, and then I take it down on my actual jaw so that again, that's where I get a lot of breakouts, but it's also where the sagging I'm noticing is starting to creep in. And then I do the other side and then I'll take it up to my forehead and I just work it from my hairline down across my forehead. For me, my forehead's the most sensitive. I don't know if it's because it's round and there's like, like crevices or whatever that it's like trying to get into but that's always for me that's the most uncomfortable part so I can go a little bit lighter there and then I also do my neck I have this necklace line here that bothers the shit out of me I tried Botox once on it I don't think I did enough units I did like 25 I probably need like 40 because it didn't do anything um so I'll try doing Botox on it again uh, and if that still doesn't work, like with more units, then I'm probably going to have to do some kind of, I don't know, some kind of surgical thing. Necks and hands, give it away. So I just am going across that in line. You can do it under your jaw or under your chin, whatever, whatever you want to do. So like I said, the neck and the hands really give away your age. So you can also use this on the back of your hands. Like you should be taking your products that you're using on your face to the back of your hands anyway. But in case you're not, let this be a reminder. We've done the first direction. Now we're going to do the, ex the opposite direction in the exact same places that we've already done. So I want this way to start. Now I'm going to kind of come from this way. So think of it like an X. So you start in that way and then you go that way. So... We go like this in the exact same spots that I've already done. So you can see I'm sort of, I think you can tell, like I'm sort of starting to look like I have a little bit of a sunburn and that's pretty normal in my experience. Uh, when you go to a doctor's office and get a professional microneedling treatment, you will look extraordinarily red. So I figure, okay, that's pretty good for at home. Like I look like I have a mild sunburn. It fades before, you know, the end of the day. Now 
now that I go to my chin, I'm going to, so I went really sideways. I went a little less angular, but I'm going to go more angular now. Okay. So we're not done. So we started by making the X shape. That's what we start with. Now we're going to make a T shape. So we went side to side. Now we're going to go up and down or up and across, I should say. So again, working in those few sections over and over. It is a little bit tedious, I will admit. It's not my favorite process to do in terms of like in the moment but the results are worth it, and so I do it. Again, I only do this maybe three times a week, always on clean skin. I also do this at nighttime. I'm doing it in the daytime because, you know, I've got a whole nighttime routine and I just can't be bothered and disrupted for that to film a video, but this is a nighttime uh, part of my, this is a nighttime routine. So bear that in mind too. It's also important because when you've microneedled, you need to be very cautious in the sun. So you could do it in the daytime, but you have to really load up on the SPF. Otherwise you're much more prone to sun damage because of what you're doing to your skin. Okay, and then down the neck too. I mean, I think you're getting the idea, right? I just wanna make the point, I just wanna drive home the point that it's not just one or two passes and then you're done. It's a total of probably 20 passes because you're doing four different positions and you want to do about four to five passes in each of those positions. So yeah, about 20 passes in different directions just to make sure you've hit all of the layer of the skin. Now we'll go through and we'll do that perpendicular. That's the word, the perpendicular line. So we just go in straight back and forth. I'm bored, I just pretend I finished. So I finished my face and my neck, at least in the large parts, parts. This is where I would then, I will change it out now for the narrowest of all the rollers. And I take that same approach, but I'm gonna do it all under my eye now. So a few passes. It, it's a little hard to do all four of those directions when you're talking about under the eye, but you know, you just kind of, you make it work. You just. I kind of go from different angles and then I go up and down like this, as you can see, all the way under the eye. And my Botox works really well around my eyes. So, you know, my eye, crow's feet are actually like the least of my concerns, but if that's a big concern for you, this is a really good attachment for getting into that area. We do the other eye, same way. Whew, my face is feeling warm, nice and warm. I have like, I'm really working on growing the tails of my eyebrows because they've always been so thin. I'm using this wonderful um, lash slash brow serum and I'm only using it on my brows. It's really good. I will link it in the description below. It's the Ordinary's Peptide Brow Lash Serum and it's so inexpensive. It's like 14 bucks and it is so effective. I used to have like no brow over here and I do and I've only been using it for like two weeks, a week and a half. I mean, it happened quick. This is also a good little attachment for 11s, up and down, back and forth and then across. So this is actually a really nice little example here because you can see in a small space how many times I'm passing and in what shape and what pattern. So there you go. Do the lips if you wanna create some more plumpness in your lips, this is nice. Last attachment is this like fine tip attachment that I'm gonna muscle my way through showing you. So again, it's got these little needles. I'm just going to write in on this exact spot just a few times. Whew. I don't love how it feels, but it's worth it. So a few times on that spot, a few times on this spot, you can really see how pink I'm getting. Oh, 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 fuck, fuck. Okay. So the, now that you're freshly microneedled, your skin's pink, what that means is it's prepped, it's ready to go, it's dying for some hydration and different um, active ingredients. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. I am glistening like a seal, which means I am moisturized for the gods and ready to go. So that's my microneedling routine. That's why you would use it. That's how it works. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, I would love it for you guys to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you're here, that you're enjoying the content and that you'd like to see more.
And then I'm not just doing this all alone to no one in my closet, like a fucking three-year-old putting on a show in the backyard for her parents. I mean, like, come on. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow me on Instagram too. I am at Cupcakes OMG. You can find all of the crazy shit that I'm either loving or hating over there with lots of other beauty and wellness tips. And share with a friend. Share with a friend. Because sharing is caring. Granted, I can understand if like you want to be the best looking friend in your group and you don't want them to know your secrets. Thanks for watching you guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Look at me wearing a headband. Like I'm fucking Charlotte York. Like I play golf. Like I own a Lily Pulitzer dress. <laughs>